Eileen, once a diagnosis is made and we realize that the patient is a surgical candidate, I know none of us are surgeons here, but what are the typical surgeries that you see being done in your patients? I think that it's frequently a little bit confusing for the patient to understand what a Whipple is, you know, that we're removing the head of the pancreas. Nowadays, that frequently we're doing a pyloris preserving surgery versus the classic one, removing the tail of the pancreas, leaving the spleen, taking the spleen out. Uh, what do you usually tell your patients when it comes up to surgery? Right, so I think it matters where the tumor arises in the pancreas. So for tumors in the head of the pancreas, which is the most common site, about 70% of the time, the typical operation is a Whipple surgery, and that's a big operation that involves significant uh, reconstruction of the upper gastrointestinal tract. So we're taking out the head of the pancreas, we're taking out the gallbladder, re rejoining the drainage tube from the gallbladder, the, the bile duct uh, back to the uh, bowel, taking out part of the duodenum, which is the upper small bowel, and sometimes, and you've alluded to this, taking out part of the stomach, but as you've noted, there's been a move away from that in recent times. So that operation takes, you know, typically seven to 10 days in terms of recovery in the hospital. Uh, that will be an average hospital stay. And then for most people, it's a four to six to eight week uh, recuperation period uh, before they're ready for the next step in terms of post-operative treatment. But many will tell us it actually takes longer before they really feel that they've mm -hmm. uh, recovered from, from the immediacies of the surgery in terms of appetite, weight, energy, uh, digestion issues. So that's head of pancreas tumors. For the, the less uh, common areas where we see pancreas cancer in the body and tail, the main operation is, is called a distal uh, pancreatectomy, and that's taking out the left side of the pancreas. Typically, the spleen is removed, not always, and as you've rightly alluded to, there is some consideration these days to whether we should be preserving the spleen, mm -hmm. as that may provide some immune uh, function and resistance to infection over time. And we always make the point that we want to make sure if people's spleen comes out that they get vaccinated Certainly. with uh, pneumococcal vaccine, sometimes meningococcal vaccine, haemophilus uh, vaccines, as they are somewhat more susceptible to certain infections. Um, distal pancreatectomies are a little bit easier to recover from because there isn't all the, the replumbing that goes on uh, mm -hmm. compared to a Whipple surgery. And typically, patients are ready a little sooner for post-operative treatment after a distal pancreatectomy compared to a Whipple surgery. And as we mentioned before also, Eileen, I think it's very important for the patient to know that they must go to a place where there's a multidisciplinary approach. They need to see a surgeon that is very well versed and experienced in doing these surgeries, particularly nowadays that there's so much a uh, buzz on open surgery, laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery. So whatever they go, make sure that it's a center of uh, expertise and uh, that they really know and that they have a very high volume and experience to guarantee the best outcome. So that's uh, uh, an important point to emphasize. I mean, the reality is it isn't always possible, mm -hmm. but where possible, I think a center of expertise, multidisciplinary uh, support, uh, and access to you know experienced surgeons and supportive care is uh, is is essential for for the optimal outcomes and that that has been proven pretty extensively now in in the literature and uh, we really try and, and encourage that uh, where possible. Thank you.